Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Alison McConnell and Tam McManus here with us on this Monday. Uh, lots to look back on from the weekend's Premiership fixtures. Of course, we'll look ahead to the midweek fixture involving uh, St Mirren. We'll hear from Jim Goodwin. Uh, we'll also hear from David Martindale, Stephen Gerrard talking about Rangers win at the weekend as well. We'll hear from you. You can give us your thoughts on your favourite team and how you think they performed over the weekend weekend all the emerging stories today we will discuss so with that in mind a few things that i've got to get through don't forget you can follow us on our facebook and if you get a chance uh, don't forget also to share the stream and if you're on youtube you can hit the subscribe button and ongoing at the moment is the fabulous competition fairly straightforward if you see the competition you can win yourself a diego maradona canvas you could win yourself an xbox and an ipad all one big prize. All you have to do, if you know the answer to the question, hit the send message button and you're in with a chance of following the instructions through. You'll be in the hat to try and win that um, fabulous hat trick of prizes. So good luck with that. Um, OK, lots of things that I've got to mention as well. Uh, the first of them is a big hi to Ian McCarthy um, from Elgin, who watches the show every day. And I want to say to you from Ruffy, myself, Tam and Alison, thank you, Ian, for watching the show. Uh, we really appreciate your support. And uh, the reason we know this is your daughter, Janine, contacted us from Perth, Australia. And she says, you both watch it every day. And then at the end of the programme, you both have a chat to discuss what was on the programme and the things that certain people said. So that's absolutely magnificent. And Janine goes on to say, we love it, but we think Tam McManus should be disciplined for taking Friday off the show to hang out with sponsors. And I agree with you, uh, Janine. I think it's a terrible <laughs> situation we find ourselves in there. You missed me, Peter. You missed me, sir. We, we did indeed. I actually I made that last bit up. But Ian and Janine, thank you for no, you supporting did. us. And, and, uh, <laughs> and also, a big hello to guys from DJM Football Kits. Now, the reason I mention this, uh, DJM guys all watch the programme and they sell old and new uh, football tops but I was just wondering if you could have an old top um, at this moment is there one that you would absolutely bite the hand off the DGM guys uh, Tam to get a hold of they, oh. they do classic ones yeah, I, I like to I like the Dortmund strip uh, remember Lambert wore it when he won the European Cup the Illuminous Yellow oh yes I, yes. Like, uh, I liked that one that was my favourite strip growing up as a boy I think I was only 14-15 when, when they won the European Cup so I liked that one Carol Heinz Riedler the striker Yep, he's my favourite striker. Very so good I'd, have, I'd have a read, a Riedler Dortmund top. Uh, Alison, if you had the one choice, what would it be? Argentina '86. Okay, fair enough. Um, and Ruffy, uh, I'd definitely go for Ajax, uh, the old Ajax strip. I thought that was superb. In fact, uh, most of the clubs that I went to, uh, uh, I made sure we wore that strip at some stage of the season. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good shout, Ruffy. Um, uh, on that theme that Alison mentioned there, I, I probably, uh, I probably look at the Boca Juniors number ten, which is a fantastic uh, top as well. It's quite iconic too. Um, anyway, lots of people um, giving us their thoughts on what top they would take. But hi to the guys there, and also happy birthday to Duncan Kippen. Um, who was, uh, it's his birthday um, on Sunday there, so hopefully you had a good time, Duncan. And the last person, I've turned into, I've turned into like uh, uh, one of these uh, shows where you just give out birthday requests, but this one's the most... Josh Bowie? Uh, absolutely, it does sound like that, doesn't it? Happy 59. Yeah, exactly. Um, put your glow sticks up. Um, last one here is a happy 59th birthday um, to a girl who's had four major successful cosmetic surgeries and her hero is Dolly Parton. And it's her birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday, happy 59th to Alison McConnell. It's your birthday tomorrow, Alison. You look fantastic for 59. <laughs> you, you didn't think we were going to let you away without, not, without mentioning your birthday, Ali. <laughs> You, I know we should never ask a lady her age, but do you, are you looking forward to it? Oh, can't wait! A lockdown birthday, <laughs> uh, and I'm off. I'm off booze for Lent as well. So uh, yeah, uh, oh. a rip roaring Tuesday night birthday. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, uh, thanks for letting us know that, Ali. You should get pil- <laughs> You'll be getting filters by the end. I'm gonna send that bowl of champagne then. <laughs> exactly. I can't believe I know. I just can't believe. Yeah. Can you elaborate on the cosmetic surgery? No, I just did that for a while. She looks fantastic, Rocky. Uh, anyway, the, the, the necessary list in the next decade. <laughs> happy birthday. Would you get cosmetic surgery, Ali, if you had the money? No. No. Good. Not for me. I'm glad. I'm too much Growing of a wish. Fantastic. I'm happy you said that. Anyway, listen, lots of football to talk about. Let's get to the, the meat and bones of this. Um, I think another seven points, Ruffy and Rangers will be champions and they could they could actually lift the title at Celtic Park. They may go into that game if the results go their way, only needing a draw. Yeah, and, uh, fortunately for Celtic, there's no supporters in the stadium, uh, which would have made it even worse. Uh, but if you're, you're in Celtic's camp, you've, you've got to say, bring it on. You've got to say, Let's stop it. You know, that's the first thing you do when you've got somebody coming to your ground to win something. Your, your main aim is to stop them celebrating at the end of it on your own pitch. So I would like to think that that's what they're going to try and do. But uh, I'm sure Rangers will be trying to do the opposite. But uh, as I said right at the beginning there, fortunately there are no fans in that ground to, to see whatever's going to happen. Uh, yeah, well, I think a lot of Rangers fans would love to be there um, supporting it as well. Uh, lots of people sending messages on the performance of Rangers. Um, I must give a mention to Stephen Hamilton. Stephen, this isn't the show for you. Um, we tend to have real football fans who don't make derogatory comments. So all the best to you, Stephen, elsewhere trolling on one of the gutter sites. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, um, it was an impressive win by Rangers. And I'll tell you, um, Aribo scored some cracking goals, Tam. Yeah, he did. Listen, it was a fantastic performance from Rangers. I think the first half, uh, Dundee United had a few chances early doors, and Alan McGregor was called into action. But uh, they're, they're so good going forward, and uh, Aribo was at the heart of everything. Even the first two goals, you know, he was at the heart of it, you know, playing balls in. And uh, the third goal, you know, top corner, great strike with his left foot. Uh, I thought he was outstanding. Uh, and Rangers marked on, as we said. You know, we don't expect anything less. You know, I think that's only the second goal that Rangers have lost at, at home all season. I mean, Nolte's consolation goal, so... Just shows you how strong they've been at the back and how, how much they deserve to win the league. They've been the best team by a mile. Yeah, and, and even as a striker, Tam, I'm sure you would agree, if you were going to score any goal, you wouldn't really care if uh, the keeper hit the ball off your face and it ended up in the back <laughs> of the net. <laughs> that, that's when you know it's going your way. Morelos, what a, what a goal. Peter, uh, yeah, listen, you get your reward as a striker. It happened to me against Celtic at Parkhead. Uh, Javier Sanchez Brotto, Spanish goalkeeper. Ball got pl- passed back to him and he, he kind of did a donut and uh, I went into shot him down, he hit it off me and the ball kind of broke to me about three yards and I tapped it in the empty net. So sometimes you get that when you go in and you, and you pressurise the goalkeeper, they can make a mistake. But uh, listen, Morelos, another goal he's tally, he'll no bother, every goal counts. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, 4-1 was an emphatic win. And I mentioned Joe Aribo at the start there. Stephen Gerrard, um, uh, as you would expect, praising him to the heavens. Now you're seeing the real Rebo power, strength, base from midfield, skills, outplaying, and um, you know, letting shots go because he's got the quality from range as well, not just to score um, finishes when he's arriving in the box, but to take shots on from outside the box. It's a fantastic strike, and um, you know, he's back for real now. The real form's back. Well, when he first burst onto the scene, Alisson, he looked really, really impressive. Good left peg on him, could pick a pass. And, of course, as you can see from the weekend, can score a cracking goal or two. Yeah, he certainly hit a bit of form in the last few weeks. I thought he played particularly well on Saturday. I think you'd have to qualify that too by just seeing how uh, incompetent the United were, particularly in a defensive sense. But, yeah, I thought he ran the show at the weekend. And, and there's no pressure now, really, on all these Rangers players. Between now and the end of the season, there's an opportunity to go out and uh, and showboat a wee bit, if you like. The, the, the title is more or less in the bag. I think even Stephen Gerrard said after the game that they can allow themselves now to, to start uh, looking forward to it and, and it just confirms what we've all known for the last few months but it, it's an opportunity now for these players to really enjoy it because there are very few times I think when you play Celtic or Rangers where you can go out and there isn't that weight of expectation on you now it's it's um it's as free as it gets for them 
Yeah, um, uh, the only downside to this whole thing, Ruffy, is when you pick up injuries, because everybody will want to be involved in the title running uh, to win the title in that game that eventually gets Rangers over the line. But you've got Ryan Jack limping off injured. Tavernier's out for three to four weeks as well. Um, these are injuries that... I mean, it doesn't really affect the overall outcome of the league title, but it'll affect the, the guys personally. They'll want to be involved. Yeah, I think particularly Ryan Jack, you know, having been out for a wee while there and then coming back in and showing some tremendous form. The manager definitely has him up there, you know, and he'll be disappointed that he's, no, he's not going to be going in an extended run from now to the end of the season. Uh, and I'm sure we all will as well. You know, we we think he, he could be a big player for Scotland in, in a particular position. So, no, I think the, the hope is not as bad as what it looked. And uh, I'm sure everybody will be hoping he comes back quicker. Yeah, I think a lot of people now just getting ready for the coronation. But uh, Stephen Gerrard still at this moment just offering a note of caution. We're full focus and full attention to into Thursday night now because we want to go match last season's achievement to go into the to last 16 in Europe. That's very important to us. And then we've got a bit of a gap then to, to Livingston away. And we, we'll move on to there. We've just got to go and finish the job off. Um, the games are there for us. The opportunity is there for us. But the big reminder to myself, staff, players, supporters, and anyone else that's covering us is we've won nothing yet. Uh, yeah, I think he's, he's he's probably just itching between him and Gary McAllister, just sitting there thinking it is so close, the dream um, of winning this title. And, you know, the stature of him will go through the absolute roof when he delivers it. And I think, will it make it all the sweeter, um, Tam, if it's at Celtic Park? I think for the supporters it would, Peter. I think the fans, you know, listen, it's been a long time since they've won anything, uh, particularly the league title. So I think to go to Celtic and win it would be magnificent for the fans. But I think the players, they just want to win it. And whether it's at Ibrox or the Easter Road or a Parkhead, whatever, I think it's just, you know, you take it as it comes. Um, but for the supporters, listen, it would give them more bragging rights over over their Celtic supporting pals, you know, to go and win it at Parkhead. But as Ruffy said, there's no fans there. So I think it's a wee bit irrelevant where, where Rangers actually win it. But for the supporters, you know, they'll, they'll love to boast about it and say they won the title at Parkhead. So I think for the fans, it's more important than, than probably for the players and the managers. Yeah, in a strange sort of way, Ruffy, that the, the, the timing of things is not ideal. Uh, I mean, already now the English Premier League is, is getting ready for some fans back in. I think 25% of capacity is the suggestion that the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, will allow to the English Premier League, which is a huge bonus. And you would imagine that maybe following suit would be the Scottish Government for potentially the last game of the season. It hasn't happened. I'm just speculating that if everything goes according to plan. No, I think that would be Stephen Gerrard's biggest disappointment. That uh, I know we are talking about winning the, the league at Parkhead. He would have wanted to win it at Ibrox in front of 50,000 Rangers supporters. That would have been... The highlight for, for him and his players has been nothing better than, than doing it at home in front of your own support. Uh, and I think that'll be a disappointment for him a bit. Not an anticlimax, obviously, with no supporters in it. Yeah, you're still going to celebrate. But I think with 50,000 people behind you, you know, the people that you've wanted to win it for aren't, aren't there, unfortunately. So, you know, I think if would grab a hold of anything, whether it was two, three, four, five, or whatever, thousand getting in, I'm sure it would always be a bonus. Yeah, and let's not forget that Dundee United were on the end of a 4-1 uh, hiding against Rangers. Um, I'm not too sure those battles that Dundee United are looking at to secure top six will be against uh, the likes of Rangers. It's the other teams, Alisson, that they want to try and get those crucial points to get them into the top six. I think if we perform like today, and we show the qualities like we, we, we showed today, and the work rate that we showed today, undoubtedly, we will be a force in the Scottish Premiership. We have to keep a level. I keep saying to everybody who, who cares to listen, it's a team that's just come up. Standards are getting set all the time. A new one gets set today, um, and we won't allow them to go below that. Yeah, I, I think Mickey Mellon just saying there, Alison, that obviously uh, there's a learning curve. There's a team that he's building. Uh, if they get into the top six, I think we'll view that as you know, a real bonus this season? Without a question, without a question of a doubt, I think if they get into the top six, they would see it as a bonus. I have to say, 
I'm not sure they're quite good enough to be at that level. I've seen them a few times this season. Uh, I, I think at the minute, I think my money would probably be in St Mirren nicking it. Uh, I thought defensively they were all over the place at the weekend, uh, and I think they've been very inconsistent at times this season. Okay, uh, that's Rangers and Dundee United 4-1 win, Rangers getting close to the title uh, and if you're a Rangers fan out there, where would you like to win it? Would it be sweet if it was at Celtic Park um, or is it just the uh, getting uh, over the line and celebrating later on uh, when fans are indeed allowed back into the stadium? Um, as far as Celtic are concerned, well yesterday was just uh, another um, debacle. It's the only way to describe it. Um, Celtic fans have taken so much pain uh, this season. Um, if I'm going to offer some comment on it, Ruffy, my feeling is this is no longer about Neil Lennon. This isn't about the manager anymore. Um, some of the uh, comments about him have been, you know, disgusting. I don't think it's about him. I think it's about the chief executive and a board that's been totally and utterly indecisive at a point when they could have saved the league they didn't bother. Um, and they've stuck with a situation which is getting farcical week by week with no insight into what the future holds for Celtic fans. Yeah, I would agree with you 100%. You know, the, the, the reasons when you commit with things and when you don't, uh, the biggest reason for me is I don't think they have anybody. I don't think they have anybody ready to step in. Uh, I don't think they've identified anybody uh, of the stature that uh, they need if it's going to happen. Uh, and you can see by Neil Lennon last night, even he's he's run out of excuses. He, he's run out of th things to say. And the only thing he can do now is hold his hand up and say he's sorry to the fans. You know, before it was a wee excuse here, a wee excuse there, and, and wait for this and wait for that. But I, I think him himself now, with the, the you can see him last night, and he just, he just doesn't know what he's saying now. You know, you, you can't go into a game and, and have 75% possession and, three times more shots and tar target than the other team and end up winning, uh, getting beat one nothing. It's just when you're a manager, you come off the, the, the park and you just don't know what to say. You, you just don't have any any re re ready-made answers for the media when you when you go into it. So you just go to hold your hand up and say, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, can't, I, I just can't put my finger on how these players can go on a five, six winning run and then put in a performance like that. Well, Alison, the, the, the strange thing is uh, there was anger before. Um, I'm not talking about anger towards the manager. That's a separate issue and the conduct of people is unbecoming. Um, you can be angry and then say, look at the stats, the manager has to go. If you're a balanced person and you look at it that way. But I think now, I think a number of Celtic fans have gone beyond anger to apathy. And that is quite simply, they're not watching it. They know it's coming. They're no longer angry. They're just looking and thinking. I mean, the amount of people I've spoken to who said they just turned it off. They just knew it was coming and they weren't bothered anymore because they haven't had any answers. They're absolutely scunnered with what they're watching. They're not going to listen to any excuses that are coming. And I would suggest to you, Alison, that the next bit of spin coming from this board uh, will be the manager didn't, we couldn't get him in January and that's why we had to wait. And we had to wait a long time because he didn't want to come in at this time. I think uh, I think there's been an acceptance amongst the Celtic support that this is it, it's your season of nightmares. It's just uh, it's it's gone from bad to worse. I think it's there, there's been a, a concession that the title was long gone. What after Christmas? Once once Celtic lost that game at, at Ibrox at, at the beginning of the year, I think there was an acceptance that it had unravelled to the point where there was no return. The, the question about why there hasn't been a change, I think, comes down to the fact that there, there's been a hope of getting to the end of the season, and there will what you what I would anticipate is that there'll be a, a fairly substantial restructure throughout the club from top to bottom. I think we're already aware of, of one big change. We know that Peter Law is going to step down at the end of the season. And I think what you'll find now is that it'll be the beginning. Of a, of a complete overhaul of the, the football operation that's going on. And I think the, the hope had been that they would get to the end of the season, that they would limp on. But uh, I don't think anyone could have envisaged the collapse of the magnitude that we've seen. I think you can forgive losing a title. Fans will forgive losing 10 in a row if it's done a certain way. I think you, you lose a title by, by a point or you lose it by three points or you take it until the final games of the season. I think the, the real disgust and the ire has come at the manner in which it's been lost and, and the way that they've they've gone into freefall. Now, I know they had won 
five games up until up until last night's defeat in Dingwall. But that that was the the most consistent they'd been. That was the best kind of run of form they they pieced together for, for some months. In fact, I think that that, that might have been the, the best run throughout the campaign to that point. And it's just not been good enough. And I think you have to point the finger at every single aspect of the club. It, it's not just the manager that should bear the brunt of it. I think there's there's a number of players that have woefully underperformed this season. And you would have to go and look in the mirror and ask the question why. Yeah, I think you're 100% correct, Alison, in the fact that the buck, Tam, stops with the manager. He has mm. to take he has to take the criticism. I don't think he has to take abuse, um, but he has to take it on the chin and say he, he's failed this season. But I think he was also failed, as Alison mentioned, by the players. But the most important factor for me, and this is the point that I think has angered a lot of Celtic fans, the bad decisions, the indecision, the delays all from the chief executive and that board has hampered any kind of change in what was happening. Because if they had been decisive, they may well have been able to salvage some sort of battle for the title. And I'm not taking and I think I'm not taking anything away from Rangers because Rangers deserve tremendous credit because They've stuck to their guns. They've bought a certain type of player. They've won. They've played some really nice football. They've got a European campaign going as well, which is impressive. So it's it's not taking anything away from them. It's all those aforementioned problems that I think have scuppered any chance of even battling for the title. Yeah, listen, Celtic have imploded, Peter. There's no doubt about it. I was looking last night. You know, Celtic have played 30 games. They've, they've dropped 26 points. We, we, we spoke at the start of the season uh, and I don't think the SPFL, the, the Premiership, is the strongest league this season. You know, it's been it's been stronger in the past. And I looked at it and I went, you know, I think I think it could come down to the old firm games. You know, I think that Celtic Rangers will beat the rest more, more or less every week. And you look at it, Celtic have lost four games and drew seven. You know, out of 30 games. And they've lost to St Mirren, they've lost to Ross County. They're losing to teams they should never, ever be losing to. And you've got to give credit to Rangers. I know they've beat all the rest. They've only dropped, I think, eight points, four draws. But Celtic have been dreadful. And, uh, you know, the points that they've dropped, you know, you look at the old firm games and we spoke about it as well. I think in October, Celtic should have changed the manager. You know, I think if you rewind and you go back to past shows, I think I think, I, I think I said October. You know, Celtic had to go and change the manager because all I could see was what's happening now. Rangers going further and further clear and Celtic getting worse and that's what's happened. And everybody's got to take a look at themselves. The directors, the manager, the players. It's been a collective disaster at Celtic this season. But uh, I think the points that they've dropped against some of the teams, you know, St Mullins, Livingston's teams like that, they should never be dropping. And I think that's probably handy Rangers the league. As, as, as much as Rangers have, have won it, Celtic have dropped team, uh, points against teams that should never be dropping points against when they're going for 10 in a row. Uh, and uh, Craig McGregor says here, I don't agree with this collapse. Celtic only lost one game in the league out with Rangers until last night. If Rangers um, weren't so good and lost a game or two, then the scatter gun would not be out. Uh, Rangers have caused what's happening at Celtic. Craig, it's, I mean, it's a good point you make. I mean, everybody's got their uh, opinion on this. I think everybody, I think a lot of people don't want to deflect away from what is effectively Ruffy. You know, a great season for um, Steven Gerrard. He has, the board have stuck by him. They've tried to give him as much money as is possible. And he's bought well, and he's bought well and covered the positions. But it, it reminds me of the banner that was held up at Celtic Park. The only thing that will stop Celtic winning 10 in a row is Celtic. And the recruitment has been poor, and he's still there. And the chief executive delayed on making major signings. And of course, there was one blunder after another that scuppered the manager, and the manager ended up with a situation where the recruitment was poor and he had players who all had their own agenda inside uh, the squad. And and it just collapsed that way. So there's, as Tam says, there's a multitude of sins, but if they'd been decisive at boardroom level, I think they might have been able to make a fight of it. Yeah, I think uh, if you ask any Celtic supporter, the disappointment, uh, the disappointment would be that... Uh, Somebody at Celtic hasn't identified that you know Rangers coming again, and and it's happened down through the years, and a lot of the Celtic supporters will, will relate to not uh, strengthening and in strength, you know, and just sitting there and just saying, oh, we're so far ahead, we don't need to spend money, we don't need to go and buy that player, we don't need to go and buy that player, and they just haven't seen Rangers getting better and better in the last the last three years since Stephen Gerrard has been there, and you're right, you know, Stephen Gerrard's policy of bringing players in. The roofs, the Etans, 
Hey, what he's done is he strengthened his bench, a, a bench that Celtic was always strong, but now Celtic's bench is just ordinary. Uh, and you saw it in the, the European game with Rangers at uh, midweek there, the players that he brought on in the last 15 minutes, they, they won the game for Rangers. And Celtic have been doing that year in, year out, but they're not doing it now. And, and, and the thing I do agree with Neil Lennon is there are some people, same players have to have a serious look at themselves because they're either just sitting in a wee comfort zone and don't have the hunger that certain Celtic players had in the past. And that's, I think, the, the point that Tam's trying to make there. Somebody should identify that these players should have been out the door three or four months ago rather than still being there just now. And now you're seeing the, the fruition of that, that it hasn't moved them on. It's just players just biding their time and getting a good wage. Um, a, a number of things have happened over it and, and Brian Riley says the fans get slaughtered for wanting him sacked back then Tam well I don't think they did I think the people who get slaughtered there's, a, there's always a danger I think of rewriting history Tam the fans mm. didn't get slaughtered the, the, the fans who were slaughtered were the fans who were um, raising uh, distasteful banners um, that left a lot to be desired um, I think mm. you can voice your opinion, but you can do it in a way which is measured, balanced and fair based on the results, which we and many others, radio, television, newspapers, many others have offered a balanced view on it. Um, but there are some who go over the top. Yeah, I think there has been. Peter, I think congregating, you know, the, the outside Celtic Park in the, in, in the midst of a pandemic wasn't right. You know, you, there, I don't know, there maybe a hundred fans outside you know, and, and getting into getting into scuffles with police and all that. Listen, that, that's not acceptable. As you say, there's a way to, there's a way to event your fury, but it's not that. You know, and um, listen, the Celtic fans have every right to be raging this season. And I, I, I thought Ferenc Varos, I thought that result was it was, and then Sparta Prague in the in the UEFA Cup. After those games, Peter, I think the manager should have been should have been removed, and it would have gave Celtic at least, as you said, a wee sniff of trying to catch Rangers, but. We're plodding on, I think, with Neil Lennon. You've, you've gave yourself zero opportunity to win the league. You know, if you bring somebody in, you might get a wee bounce, you might get a wee boost for the players. You know, I don't know, I'm at Neil, I'm tracking. Maybe they did approach him, we don't know that. But somebody shot term just to give the, the whole club a wee boost and, and a jolt. And maybe go and take it to Rangers and you wouldn't be dropping points against your Livingston and your St Murn, you'd be closer. And, uh, you know, you'd give yourself a chance. But by, by keeping Neil Lennon the job, I, I think that Celtic have gave the supporters zero chance of winning the league. No chance whatsoever. Yeah. And there's been a distinct lack of communication on what the strategy and the policy is, Alison. There was an enforced interview on the Dubai debacle. But other than that, it's been silence. It's almost as if they think that they stay... It, it, it's almost, you know, it reminds me of... It reminds me of sometimes in government when they actually either throw out a bit of bad news on a day when people's eyes are deflected away somewhere else or they think if they shut up long enough, it'll just go away and nobody will bother about it. But for me, the manager, apart from the mistakes and Tam's highlighted it there, it's the board. I cannot believe the way they've conducted themselves this season. And whether he was leaving or not, it was the decisions of the chief executive and that board which have left them literally with nothing to fight for. I think the lack of communication is a communication in itself. I think that's, that's what's told you that the review has, has taken place and and that he's pretty much in situ until the end of the season. And I think what you'll see is is, is a fairly substantial overhaul this summer. I think there'll be a, a move uh, in every department. I think that there'll be people coming in and I think you, they'll, they'll look to try and reinvigorate the club. But from a, a fan's perspective, you've, you've got to understand that they've been left to, to twist in the wind a bit uh, and watch impotently uh, as the season has unravelled. Uh, the fact that you've not been allowed into games mean that, that means that there's been no outlet to go and voice your feelings to make your, your disapproval known. I think that's maybe reflective in, in some of the toxicity, toxicity that's been there on, on, on social media at times. Um, but I think so much stems from a, an impotency and, and a, a, a failure to, to be heard. Uh, at a time when uh, when the season has just gone into disarray. Yeah, um, and just as a, a little footnote here, because I'm not going to miss out on this, Ruffy, fair play to Ross County um, for getting the win. Now, mm. sometimes you can look at it and you can say to yourself, Ruffy, that, um, you know, because Celtic and Rangers are, sometimes lose games, you don't give credit to their team. Let's be honest about it, Ruffy. They didn't have too much possession. They had one good shot. 
from uh, Blair Spittle, and they had a set piece, and they, they were still able to beat Celtic, which for John Hughes is magnificent. What a shot in the arm it was for Ross County. Oh, if, if these players weren't bouncing off the, the dressing room and, and after that result, then, uh, you know, I don't know what, what, when they'd be bouncing off it because it was, it was a, as a do high, die hard, uh, you know, display. Uh, I think if they're all honest enough, they, they could have been on the end of a three or a four one defeat there, but they weren't, you know. So you've got to build on that. You've got to, I'm sure Yogi would have went in there and he'd have been punching them all individually and, and getting them up for the next games ahead because although that is a massive result last night, it's not the end of the fight, but uh, the players have got to take encouragement uh, off of that one. And uh, the only tragedy for me is Blair Spittle got a game when we were supposed to be getting them back. So I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Do you know what, Ruffy? It's just nothing's happened. Oh, no. See, see over the last happened. three or four weeks, everything, every story that's come out, you've managed to twist it into a, oh, party thistle. You know, Bruce Anderson scores for Hamilton Ackies. Yeah. He nearly had him. We were promised him. Laurie Shankman. Oh, Laurie Shankman. Yeah. 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 David, David Moyes. David Moyes was given as a young boy for West Ham. <laughs> He comes on on Saturday and scores for the first team. <laughs> the chance he got. Anyway, apart from it, <laughs> Ruffy <laughs> thinks everybody's got it in for party. So, anyway, apart from anything else, yeah, I mean, Ross County takes them off the bottom and it's, you know, suddenly Hamilton Ackies and, uh, and Kilmarnock are thinking, oh, did not see that, didn't need that kind of result. Um, just on the flip side of this, and this is something that I think we're, we will tend to possibly spend less and less time on shortly, um, but obviously Instagram are investigating um, Shane Duffy was a, a target of sectarian abuse and, and something about the uh, death uh, of his father. Um, this comes off the back of Florian Camberry, um, and there are a number of um, unsavoury incidents on social media. The only thing I'm hanging on to, uh, like grim death uh, here on this one, Alison, is when the government legislation comes in, when they call to account the social media platforms, eventually, eventually, they'll get them. It doesn't matter if it's this year or in one, two, three years when the laws come in. The people who are guilty on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, they'll get them. You would like to think so. I, I think it's a very difficult environment to police. I think it, the the cloak of anonymity makes it very difficult sometimes to identify people. Uh, it's also very expensive as an individual if you want to go and pursue people who have who have uh, basically lied about you, have been defamatory about you on social media platforms, or have been insulting. I think uh, it's appalling. I think it. Uh, I, I think it's absolutely disgusting. We've all seen it. Some of us have have been on the end of it. It's 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 appalling, and the fact that people aren't held to account for it, I think, just rubs a bit of salt in the wind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, uh, one little aside here, which the SFA have released a statement on, uh, which is, of course, Bobby Madden and was supposed to referee the game, but he was part of three officials uh, in Scotland who were out in Greece on European duty, and they've released a statement where aware Graham Stewart was assistant referee at Saturday's Premiership match between Hibs and Hamilton. We've informed both clubs as part of a review of process, and Dr McLean has informed the Elite Sports Clinical Advisory Group no players or members of team staff involved in the match have been identified as close contacts of Graham. As a result, all three match officials must now undertake 10 days of self-isolation dated from the 15th of February as the date of last contact for Bobby and Graham and from Tuesday 16th, the date of the positive test for David. So uh, clearly that was a, a major boob by the SFA Tam on that game at Easter Road. Yeah, listen. Obviously, he was he was working at the weekend, and that that could have been disastrous uh, for for the likes of Hamilton and Hibbs. Any of their players picking up picking up anything from from one of the, the, the officials. So, listen. I think it's all got to be it's all got to be it's got, it's got to be done properly, Peter. You've got to look into people, you know, and you've got to track and trace. And uh, I think if they do that, then you know, if you have got to be, be tighter on these things, because as you said, that that, that could have maybe led to somebody at Hibbs or Hamilton or, or anybody else. Having the self isolating it affects the whole game, it affects Scottish football. So I think the SFA have got to get that right. And uh, they've apologised to both clubs, which I think is, is proper. But uh, that, that, that kind of stuff can't happen again. You've got to be tight with the track and chase, I would think. 
And, and before I get Alison and Ruffy's thoughts, Hibs 2, Hamilton nil. Um, I've got to ask you, Tam, did you get a major bonus, um, your old team from Jamie Hamilton getting sent off? He's going to appeal the decision. Um, mm-hmm. Was it harsh? Yeah, I thought at the time it was a red card. Um, listen, I'm at the game. Uh, you know, I could see him. I could see it a mile off, and I think Martin Boyle seen it as well. You know, Jamie Hamilton's came over at, at some pace. You know, and he's lunged in. I think it's. You know, I think he's probably won the ball, but I think he, the speed he comes in. I think it's something that's been taken into account by the officials and, and how high his, his foot was. Um, I think it was a little bit dangerous. I think it was reckless. Uh, I think Martin Boyle seen it coming and he's managed to huddle it a wee bit. But uh, I wasn't surprised. I thought at the time it was a red card. I wasn't surprised that the red came out. I'm looking, at, looking back at it now, possibly a wee bit harsh. But do yeah, I think he'll overturn it? No, I don't, I don't think they will, Peter. I don't think they'll overturn it. I think that'll, that'll stand, but who knows? Uh, that point that you you made there was the one thing when I looked at it time and time again, Alison. Uh, I think his studs showing mm. as he's coming in w- w- with his foot straight. I, I thought that's what really had gone against him, um, and was why the referee decided to send him off. I think sometimes too, when you see it in real time, the way that Tam's talking about, if you see the speed yeah, of the movement, yep. I think sometimes that that does justify a, a referee's decision and how they're how they're seeing it. And I think. That has to be taken into account too. Uh, I have to say, I, I saw it and I thought, my first viewing was I thought it was quite harsh. My second viewing, like you, I thought mm, studs are up. And, and when you take into account what Tam's saying there about the speed of the movement, I'm not sure which way it'll fall. I think it, it might stand. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, um, this is us trying to take a, a balanced uh, view on it, Ruffy. Um, but Tam on Hibs TV um, at the weekend was going, definitely a red. What do you think? Definitely a red. Red, everybody. Oh, yes, it's it for a... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, Tom. Yeah, I thought it was a red card. Just because yeah. of the pace he came in, he came flying in and you could hear the noise from the stand. And it was, it, you know, I was at the game, I was watching it close. And I thought straight away it was a red. And you can see the reaction of a lot of the players round about it all thought it was a red. Yeah. You know, and usually see, you can tell with the reactions of the players. See, that, see that, that's the problem for the referees. Every one of us have said mm. there, once we've watched it time and time again, he doesn't get time and time again. He, he's got to make a decision. And I think the first decision, if you're a referee, the speed he's coming in it, you're going to give it. But the more you watch it time and time again, it's probably just a yellow card. So... We'll have to wait and see how the outcome goes. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, um, Boyle missed a penalty, but Boy scored a cracker, Tom. Yeah, he did. Listen, Martin Boyle, I think five goals in his last four games. Uh, absolutely flying. I think the key to that has been Jack moving him through the middle. I think his pace has been has been so much a problem for defences. And I think that Jack's nerving coming in. I think Jackson's got an eye for a pass. I really do. I think he, he's, a, he's a very, very clever player, intelligent player, and a lot of Boyle's movements. The two of them are obviously Australian internationals. They seem to be have clicked straight away, and they're on the same wavelength. Um, so Martin Boyle's absolutely flying. Apparently, he was poor. I thought it was a good height for the keeper, but great goal. You know, curls it in the, in the bottom corner. And he was a threat all day. You know, Hamilton obviously down to ten men had to go and try and attack. And fair play to Brian Rice. He kept two up front the whole game, which I think it typifies Chipper. You know, he, he didn't he didn't park the bus and try and damage limitation. He went to try and win the game, uh, which was fair play to Hamilton Aki's, but. Martin Boyle was outstanding, and so was young Josh Doig, left back. I think he's a massive prospect, unfortunately, for Scotland. We've got three or four top top left backs. But uh, I thought he was my the match. I gave him my the match on Saturday. He scored a great goal, and I think there'll be a lot of clubs looking at him. Um, I think he's he's got a bit of the Kieran Tierney's about him. You know, he, he's got a great, great, great attitude, great engine. You know, quick up and down that left hand side all day, and good quality when he's on the ball. So I think I think he's only eighteen or nineteen years old. He's got a massive future for Hibs. Yeah, well, what a great line that is, Alison. I mean, if he's um, Tam uh, waxing lyrical about him in the same breath as Kieran Tierney is high praise indeed. I saw him a few times actually this season and he's always impressed me. I saw him away near the start of the season. I saw him at Ibrox just over the festive period and I thought he was excellent. I would agree. I think he, I, I don't know, I think comparisons can be odious. I'm not sure I would be inclined to to compare players, but I certainly think he looked like a, a, an excellent prospect. He's excellent attitude. He works very hard and, and clever on the ball too. Um, no, I, I would agree. I think he's a, a boy that looks as though he's going places. Yeah, so Hibs pick up the three points for that win over Hamilton. Uh, I know, Ruffy, you thought that Aberdeen 
would score uh, more than one goal, but Tom and I decided to stick to our guns, look at the stats, look at the evidence and think to ourselves, this mob will be lucky if they score more than yeah. one goal. And, and so it proved, Ruffy. Uh, one goal, Callum Hendry coming off the bench to score it. Um, and in the end, the Dons get the three points, but it was tight, Ruffy. It certainly was. It wasn't a great game. You know, I know the conditions were a bit poor. Uh, but you would have thought after David didn't got that goal, they would only get another, you'd, you know, because of uh, But you could see the nervousness in their game. And they were just, the players and the manager would just be happy to get the win. You know, and that's all they want. They'll not be considering, you know, whether it was one or two or three or whatever. It means it's something they can build on. But they're just definitely you know, firing in all cylinders just now. Yeah, um, they get the win. That stems this flow of anger towards Derek McInnes. Um, the, uh, the flip side of this is, I don't know, Tam, I, I don't know where Tommy Wright is thinking the points mm. are going to come from. He's running out of time and he's got to try and somehow eke out something from this Kilmarnock team. Pierre, I said it a couple of weeks ago, what one goal beats Kilmarnock at the minute. And, you know, as soon as, as, soon as Aberdeen scored the first goal, I think that's Kilmarnock beat. You don't think they're going to score a goal at the minute. I think they've only scored two goals in the last eight games. Um, they are really struggling for goals. Kyle Lafferty came on at the weekend. Looked lively. You know, he looked as if he put himself about. Looked as if he's in decent shape. So I think that all the eggs are in the Kyle Lafferty basket. I think he's got to score five or six goals we've seen now at the end of the season to, to keep commanding up. Because as you, as you said, you know, great result for Ross County last night. They've got a wee bit of momentum. Hamilton Ackies, are, I think, will will possibly get themselves out of it. So I'm looking at Kamalat now, Peter, and they're in massive trouble because they can't score a goal. So we need to wait and see. But Tommy Wright, you know, he's, he's, that's what he's got at the minute. He's got to try and get, he can't bring anybody else in. He's got to try and get the best out of that, that crop of players. But, you know, Kabamba had a good chance at the weekend. You know, he, he went through and he's not scored a goal for a while. And you could tell, you know, he, he shanked it wide to the post and Kamalat are not creating many chances. So it's up to Kyle Laffey, I think, to, to shoot them out of trouble or else I think they could get relegated. Yep, uh, it's tough at the bottom end, Alison and Motherwell um, came a cropper. Obviously, they've they've had injuries as well going into the game, but St Johnston um, were absolutely flying. I mean, one of their goals was like a Keystone Cops situation. You know, I think it hit the bar twice before eventually it was put into the back of the net. But I mean, three nothing at Atfer Park as well. Uh, and it it didn't flatter them. Like, uh, that was the game I was at on on Saturday. It could have been easily been five or six. I think they hit the woodwork Ooh. three times in the game. Motherwell offered absolutely nothing. I think there, there was one one Liam Polworth effort that went wide in the entirety of the 90 minutes. I think that was the only attempt they had on goal. It, it really it could have been anything. When it got to half time, you just you feared for Motherwell a bit. And I know I think they had maybe 13 players out altogether. Nine first team players and, and four long term casualties. So it's, it's, it's a considerable amount of people to be missing if you don't have a huge amount of depth depth but I thought they missed hugely like the the personality really of a, a Declan Gallagher and the presence just in of someone like that at the back but they were all over the place there's a couple of kids playing uh, Max Johnson was playing I actually thought that he he showed up quite well considering but um it, it, honestly it could have been any scoreline at all on Saturday and I think now that leaves them four points off of Kilmarnock, that they're only saving grace. And, and Saturday was at Kilmarnock and Hamilton both lost their games because I, I think you could see them being pulled back down into it too. Yeah, and Melamed's goals, uh, the first one was absolute quality. Mm -hmm. He was excellent, was an excellent finish. But the, the one who stood out for me, I would have to say, was Sean Rooney. I thought he was brilliant. I thought uh, he made mm. Melamed's goal, he made the first goal, he, he, he worked his socks off the whole game. Uh, and I think. I think it's Peter, Alison, it's not you. Oh, it is Alison there. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I thought You're he back. worked. I thought he worked his socks off. I think the the, the, the pleasing thing for Callum Davidson will be that the, he's got a, a number of options going into the final on Sunday. That there's a, a few players who will be knocking on the door for a start, with Melamed being one of them. 
Yeah, elsewhere it was St Mirren one, Livingston one, and I know the feeling um, is that I think Tam mentioned there he still thinks St Mirren can get top six. Jim Goodwin speaking today um, reckons it would be a huge achievement if he can guide them there as the man the first manager really at St Mirren to do that. Uh, to me personally, obviously, I would be delighted to be the first manager um, to you know take. St Mirren into that top six after a split. It's never been done since the Premier League has started. So obviously I would be delighted on a personal note, but I think as a, as a group um, and as a club as a whole, I, I think it would be a great achievement and show that we're really making some great progress. Yeah, I mean, it's all been positive, Ruffy, around St Mirren. Um, you know, Jim Goodwin, certainly, uh, his stock has risen this season. Yeah, and I think the whole team, even the young players have come in, the, the McPhersons have come in and done particularly well, you know, and he's stuck by them, you know, and you always stick by the younger players when you're getting something out of them and you're getting a result by playing them. And uh, no, I think he'd be quite confident <sighs> Confident he can get into that six, you know, and it would be massive. But as Tom said at the beginning of the show, if you, Rangers are head and shoulders above everybody. And I think if every other club has a look at themselves, it's been a real disappointment right through the whole league uh, that some of the teams, the performances, we already talked about Kilmarnock, you've got Motherwell down there, you've got Aberdeen stuttering all over the place, Dundee United, you know, are getting hammered sometimes and England on a wee run. So there's been no consistency from any team in the league apart from Rangers. Rangers have been way, way head and shoulders above everybody. Well, you, you, think every, you think every team in the league below Rangers will be disappointed with what they're producing? Oh, you've got to look at Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock shouldn't have been in the bottom three and the Motherwell shouldn't have been down there. They should be in the top six. They, they should be producing a lot more than what they're doing. You know, and if you look at all the results that they've been getting, that they haven't been consistent whatsoever. You know, and that's why we're in that, this situation. And you look at Rangers, what are they, 30-odd 30, 30 points? 30 points ahead of, you know, the third team? You know, that, that, and we're not even finished yet. It could be 40. No, it just shows you that there's been no consistency at all in these teams. I put Hibs into that as well. No, Hibs had, had a stuttered as well. Hibs and Aberdeen. So I think a lot of teams have sort of a fall, fell short so far this year. It's, it's an interesting point. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I think Hibs, Peter, 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 Hibs are on, on course to, for the record points, Tally. So I, I would disagree strongly. Uh, with Ruffy, I, I, in terms of Hibs, but I agree with him. That's from other t- clubs he mentioned, but Hibs are. Hibs could beat Neil Lennon's. If Hibs finished third this season, they could beat Neil Lennon's uh, tally, which I think would be a record for Hibs in the Premier League. So, yeah, I, I was just about since, to say. Since, since, since three points a win has come, come in. Yeah, I, Tom, I agree with you. I disagree with Ruffy on it. If only for the point, Ali, that um, I think, you know, bearing in mind the league uh, and what, what it's suffered over the past year, remember, it doesn't have a sponsor. It's relying heavily on Sky. It's relying heavily on bailouts from various people either at the club or, um, you know, being able to work out some kind of government intervention. And, of course, let's not forget James Anderson. Overall, Alison, I think the standard, I can understand where Ruffy's coming from, you know, to suggest that Motherwell shouldn't be there or Kilmarnock shouldn't be there is just nonsense because, quite simply, if your team's not good enough, your team's not good enough. And, you know, it doesn't matter about stature of what's gone before. But I do think the standard of the football, just as we were coming out in a curve of getting more and more Scottish players involved, playing 100 games, playing 150 games, I think the overall standard of Scottish football has dropped again. I don't know if you agree with me, Alison, but Rangers are flying the flag in Europe. Rangers are winning points and doing well for the coefficient. Rangers have been playing some good football. But other than that, um, you know, I understand where Ruffy's coming from, but for me, it's all about the standard, and the standard of the game is poor. Not only domestically, but but even in the European stage, we can't get any we can't get any team out with Celtic and Rangers into a group stage anywhere. I think the standard has been poor too. I would be I, I would agree with you. I'd also be inclined to agree with, with Ruffy too. I think if you go through it, every every club has had a real sticky point. Even Livingston, who are flying high now, had a really hellish. Uh, start to the season and Gary Holt left. Uh, Hibs would be the Hibs and Rangers would be the only two who I think, on reflection, will look at it and say we've surpassed our expectations for the season. I think everyone what else was the will, expectation, will have Ali, problems. Ali, what, what was the expectation, Ali, at Livingston? They know they're going to hit a sticky patch. The expectation at Livingston, you're going to reach a final 
and you're going to be Staying in the, the, league, top, the top six. Yeah, they, the they, they'll be ple- they'll be pleased with, with with the ultimate end. They'll be pleased with where it went. But I think over the course of the campaign, there, there was a point where they looked as though they were going to be dragged into the relegation mire. I think you look at Celtic, they'll be absolutely devastated at the manner of the season. It's they, they, There's no way that they've reached their potential. Aberdeen too, I think you could look at it and say they should be they should be doing better. St Mirren, I think, I know they again had, had a point in the middle of the season where it was quite inconsistent and up and down. But I think if they nudge out and the United and take that top six place, you've got to say that's been a successful season for them too. But... But I would agree. I think the standard has been poor this season. I think it, I think maybe part of it you can say no fans in the stadium and it's been an odd campaign in that respect. I think that it's just been a, a surreal season in, in many respects with, it, with the backdrop that it's been played against. But I think it, it's definitely had an impact on the quality that we've seen. Yeah, and remember when you're listening to the programme, try and listen without kind of a prejudice in your mind. Um, William Campbell says, oh dear, did Peter just say Rangers are winning a bad league? No, I've been very complimentary, William, if you could listen uh, to what we're talking about here. We've been very complimentary about the football Rangers have played, about the way they've gone about their business, about the structure of Rangers, about the manager. Um, So you clearly have to listen and take specs off and think about what we're actually saying here. Um, Ruffy's posed a point about the other teams in the league, uh, and we're talking about the standards and who has reached the standard and the expectation of this season. I actually think Stephen Gerrard will probably think, Ruffy, that Rangers have exceeded their expectation. They're ahead of where they thought they were going to be. Yeah, it's not Rangers' problem that all these other teams aren't showing any consistency. You know, Rangers have been head and shoulders above everybody and playing some tremendous football, you know, and that's been proven in every game that they've played. They haven't been beating the league. Uh, so you can't take end away from them. The, the, the only point I'm making is that the, the teams that you would expect to be up in the top six are, are nowhere near it. And the teams that are in the top six still aren't showing any consistency. And I think if the teams that we expect, throw Celtic into that as well, Celtic, Hibs, Aberdeen, you know, and even Kilmarnock to a certain extent, most most seasons are up there. I'd, and I'm not I'm not taking anything away from Livingston and St. Johnson, but we wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily be having a cup final with these two in it if all the teams were, were playing to any kind of consistency or level of performance as they usually do year in, year out. Yeah, um, OK. Um, here's a premiership table to see where your team are and whether that's where you thought they would be. Um, Rangers way out in front and only seven points from winning the title, which will please a lot of Rangers fans who've waited a long time um, to get a bit of silverware and this one is the ultimate one at the start of the season uh, that many Rangers fans were hoping Steve and Gerrard could lead them to and we're not too far away from that now. Uh, Celtic way behind Rangers and then it's Hibs and Aberdeen in that battle. But when you look, Hibs have got a four-point advantage and a game in hand. Uh, and that would be a huge bonus if Hibs could finish third uh, in this season. At uh, the bottom end, Hamilton, Kilmarnock, Ross County still in the mix. Motherwell definitely in the mix. Um, and then up above that, is there an argument, Ali, for saying St Johnston and Dundee United and St Mirren and, and Livingston have all got aspirations up the way rather than worrying about down the way? Certainly on recent form, I think you would have to say that. I think they, they, they've all hit a bit of form. St Johnson, I thought, were excellent at the weekend. St Mirren have been have been good over the last couple of weeks. I think they'll, uh, they'll have ambitions, certainly, about aiming for that top six place. OK, it's time to get to the painful part uh, for you, Ruffy, because here's the predictor, here's the scores, the head-to-head, the big meal, the big night out. Oh, and it's neck and neck. <laughs> oh, Tam has pulled up to 253, and you're on 236, Ruffy. So suddenly, from somewhere, Ruffy, you are going to have to pull out something um, to try and get yourself back in the race. Yeah, well, I'm taking Neil Le- Lennon's philosophy that uh, never give in to the end, uh, and then nobody, nobody, nobody's, uh, nobody's removed me yet. So yeah. I'll continue until continue fighting. He, he, until he stuff he's paying for that pandemic. <laughs> He's letting the rest of the season scrap. <laughs> yeah, um, I have to say that I'm, I am contemplating bringing on 
uh, Alison as the chief executive of uh, the Peter and Ruffy Football Show, Ruffy, because I think Alison is decisive. She doesn't suffer any fool, and she would remove you at a second if I gave her the power. You know, it'd be, you'd be bombed right off, by the way. You're right out of this competition. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, Tam, you'll be happy. You're now level with me. It's neck and neck, son. I did. Last night, I wanted to make it more interesting, so I purposely put in a, a couple of results that couldn't win mid-season, just to make it more exciting for the fans. But now I thought, yeah, yeah listen, I need, to, I need to try and get up there again and we'll, we'll just pull away for Ruffy and we'll just have a head-to-head, Peter. And Ruffy yeah, will absolutely. Be, well, Ruffy will be relegated. Yeah, absolutely. No, Ruffy, if the things go according to plan, will just have his money ready for taking yeah. us out for a Yahoo meal, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> all, we, all we need is a vaccine. All we need yes, is a vaccine. Yes, <laughs> And we're there with a nice bottle Where are you going, Ruffy? Fantastic. Well, by the looks of things, hey, we don't nice really Ruffy? need to go... If the, restaurants are not op- if the restaurants are not open, why not go to one of these uh, television shows where they decorate someone's house? Because clearly that's where you are, Tom. You look as if you've just come out of a TV <laughs> show, which is you paid the money to decorate your house. I mean, we we that... can't wait to be invited to that house warming, Ruffy. Look at that house he's got. Yeah. I'm, I'm, beginning, I'm beginning to wonder if it's just a cardboard cutter. It just sticks on that wall and keeps moving it. <laughs> <laughs> just move it a bit. No, I get told I've been, I've, I get told I've been taking a bit of stick from my background on Facebook, so I've got to move it. So I've moved it into the living room. I get a bit of you. I've read, read my two plant pots. Yeah, well, that's um, is that your living room, Sam? <laughs> aye, aye. Wow, that is fantastic. Looks fairly like uh, the uh, front lawn to me, Alison, which uh, <laughs> with a couch out there and the design in the background. It looks all, all absolutely minted stuff. Top of the range. You can tell he's earning money from the sponsors, Ruffy, can't you? He's looking uh, absolutely at home there with that. Anyway. He's got um, got a glass of red wine in that yeah. couch. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, his, <laughs> his, wife, his wife is... The power behind the button, let me tell you. Um, anyway, good to see you in better surroundings, uh, Tam. Uh, if only we can all get out and suddenly we can all sort our haircuts because you're putting a hell of a lot of gel in that hair. I to am, try Peter, and keep it's it so down, long. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's so long. So yeah, I'm, you I'm could be getting a mullet. Got a bit of good news for a hairdresser. Yeah. Um, listen, one other thing that uh, I think is a bit of sad news, and um, again, it's my old pal. Um, we've been pals for such a long time, and uh, Inverness Cali Thistle have released a statement regarding John Robertson. Um, uh, it's following a family bereavement, and the uh, chief executive um, of Inverness, Scott Gardner, says John has done extraordinary work behind the scenes under the most difficult circumstances, particularly following the illness which struck down his assistant manager, Scott Kellicker, at the turn of the year. While Scott continues to make good progress away from the club, John has now suffered a bereavement in the saddest of circumstances. We believe that given those circumstances, that it's best he takes some time away from the club to gather his strength. John is our friend and colleague, and he is an exceptional coach. The chairman, the board of directors, the players and the staff are all looking forward to his return. But in the meantime, all our thoughts are with him and the rest of his family. And I echo those sentiments. And I think well done to Inverness Cali Thistle for understanding the situation and leaving that door open when the time is right. He is... um, you know, I've always thought he's a top coach. Uh, I know him as a person. He's a he's a brilliant lad, and and I do hope you know after this he gets back into the chair, Ruffy, because we know Robbo. He's just a great lad, a great person. Uh, somebody you'd want to be about. Somebody you'd want as a manager, uh, players' manager. He's been there, done it. He knows what players go through, and uh, it's been a horrible year for everybody. And I think we can just all hope that uh, John can come back uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Well done to Inverness Cali Thistle for standing by him. And Scott Kellicker, it's just a a little, uh, I think, a a longer process for Scott, but we wish him well uh, as well. Um, Just touch on the championship. Alison, I don't know about you, but, you know, I I can be very pro-hearts at times. I've been accused of it from from Tam's perspective. But, well... (laughs) They're they're limping towards the title. I mean, this is, I mean, one one against Morton. No disrespect to Morton, but when you consider Hearts and and the money they've spent on players, it's not good. 
at Tyne Castle too. That game was at the weekend when when I saw the uh, I was at Fir Park and getting updates of scores around the country. When I saw that Morton were were one nothing up at one point, it just raised an eyebrow. When you think of the the quality of the players that they brought in, even just in January, Gary Mackay, Stephen coming in, and you've got Craig Gordon there. They've got a, a an excellent squad, a squad that that put it this way would would surpass the budget of many of those clubs who are in the bottom half of the, the Premier League. I, I would agree. I think um, I think you can, you're right to expect a bit more from them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and to be fair, Tam, I know he's our pundit, and we we, we love Charlie, but I think Dundee have just missed major opportunities time and time mm. again. Yeah, poor result for Dundee at the weekend. Uh, I mean, you look at the squad that have now assembled up at Dens Park, and it's a squad that should be doing better. You know, it's a poor result get beat off the Queen of South at home. So. You know, Dunfermline managed to win, but going back to Hearts, I mean, the budget they've got for players, I think, would be the third or fourth highest in Scotland. You know, and it's not good enough, you know, losing to Queen of the South, drawn to Morton, no disrespect to those teams. They will be dwarfing them in terms of the money they're paying players. Guys like, like Naismith and Boyce and guys like that, they'll be on thousands of pounds a week. And you look at some of the, the, the players in the Championship, lucky to be earning three or four hundred quid. So they should be they should be romping that league, Peter, and they're making very, very hard work of it. And the Hearts fans are not happy, even though they're top of the league. Yeah, and dare I say it, Alice, and I think there's, the, the, there will still be questions over whether Robbie Nielsen is you know, a good manager. I think he's got a lot to prove. It's fine when you've got lots of um, you know, players that you can buy, which, uh, as Tam has mentioned, they are on big money and are better calibre than everyone else. But Hearts fans want to be entertained as well. I think when it's unconvincing, when a campaign ha- ha- has any kind of ambiguity about it or, or it's not as emphatic as it should be given the budget that's here, I think question marks will always remain. I really do. I think uh, I think Hearts fans had expected so much more this season. And, and, and when you look at the quality within the squad, they're right to do so. Uh, Ruffy, just one little footnote before we go. Um, I'll tell you, I watched Liverpool-Everton. I thought Liverpool were going to win it, but... Oh. They were poor. Oh, I mean, I'm absolutely every time I watch them in the mo- at the moment, Ruffy, it's painful. Yeah, it will be painful for you because you keep topping them up all the time. But uh, he's got Europe, uh, and that's what his eye will be on Europe because uh, that top four place to get into the the, the Champions League is slipping very very quickly. Mm. But uh, the, doubt, the the good thing about it is you've got West Ham to hang on to. Your West Ham could be your new team. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a glory hunt. I'm not. Uh, to be fair, by the way. Well, Man City are doing well. Oh, support them now. Oh, oh I, couldn't, no, I couldn't support Man City. Are you kidding me? No. Um, no, but Moisey's Moise a friend of uh, a friend of the programme, uh, actually a friend of mine for a long, long time. So we want him to do well. Um, I don't know about you, Tam. Uh, am I the only one who thinks anybody who's Scottish, when they go somewhere else, I want them to do well? No, you're right. I support all the Scottish players and managers. You want them to do well when Davy Moyes, yeah. you know, West Ham, how they they never got him, you know, saved them from relegation, then they managed to get him back. And there was a lot of supporters up here who mm. wouldn't want him as a new Celtic manager. Remember, he was getting linked to Celtic, yeah. and a lot of Celtic fans were going, yeah. nah, I don't fancy him. He was rotten at Man United. Look at him now. Good manager. Yeah. And uh, I think the Celtic fans would bite your hand off for him at the minute. So it just shows you how, how it can fluctuate a manager's fortunes. He's doing really well at the minute. Yeah. Well, I, I'll be honest with you, and I, I mean, it's relevant and on a parallel with what's up here, Alison. It's amazing what can happen when you get a board that back you. Yep, absolutely. I would agree with Tam. The amount of times I heard that comment about when Davy Moyes was linked with it in the, mm. a, few, a few seasons back when, when people were turning their nose up at it and, and, and questioning whether or not he'd be good enough and whether or not he'd, lo- he'd lost it. But you go in and you see what he's done now. And I actually think he's probably in a position where, you know, Celtic probably couldn't afford him now, like where he's, he's, uh, he's gone beyond the, the budget that they would be able to offer him. Yeah, I think it's a good. This is a great point. I'm going to I'm going to finish on this, Ruffy. This is from this is from Paddy O'Gormley. That's if that's you know he's just said, Peter, how many pals have you got? Um, and I think that's a good point. I'm going to take a real kick in the teeth there, Ruffy, from Paddy, who's who's clearly not happy at my name dropping at the moment. I've got to take that in the chin, Ruffy. <laughs> No, I think it just shows you the amount of people we've had on the show uh, and the time we've had. And they are all good pals. That's why they come on. 
you know, and uh, we've had good fun with them. But, and we like to see them doing well, and that's what's happening with Davy. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, when we get uh, the uh, official nod, Tam, for everybody to get out, vaccinated, and out allowed to mix with people. We'll see how many pals we've all got when we have our first house party. Um, I don't know which one <laughs> of you wants to offer your house first. Is there anybody? There you go, yours, Peter. Up their name? You've got the biggest pad. <laughs> You've got the biggest pad. <laughs> you, 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 yours is the most decorated, to be honest with you. Uh, Ruffy's, <laughs> I think, is the safest, Alison, because it's uh, in Ruffy, the countryside looking... Looking over the west of Scotland, I mean, Ruffy can see an attack coming from about five miles away. Yeah. Even if we can well, go can somewhere put, and be socially distanced, we can we could well, go and spread put, out a bit in the garden. The, I can put the marquee up in the garden, and we can have another oh. fully out there. Aye, we so the last time. Aye, but this time, yeah. this time we'll make sure everybody stays together and doesn't wander away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's for another program. Uh, anyway, anything else? Um, I do hope, I do hope, Alison, that you have a fantastic uh, birthday. Um, Callum Dillery has mentioned this to me, and believe me, I'm going to apologise to you, Callum. Um, I'm going to get him to do it tomorrow on the program, but. Gabriel and myself, because we were working on other programs this morning, uh, and I know that um, Niall Kane has mentioned it as well. He says, where's the team of the week? Um, but because we were really busy, um, he missed it. And I can't wait to see his team of the week, Tom, because it's a highlight for us. Um, when he, yeah, usually no, throws no. In, he usually throws in Siegrist as the goalkeeper in the team of the week, but he ain't, he ain't going to throw him in this week, is he? <laughs> he might He's still. He might still. <laughs> yeah, saves. absolutely. Anyway, so apologies. Alison, I do hope you have a great birthday. Um, if we could give you one present, you know, uh, obviously we're not going to get to see uh, your house and taste uh, your um, culinary skills at the big party, but if I could give you one present, what would it be? Oh, a night out. A night out. This is, this is as good as that. We'll try and organise <laughs> that, Ali. Have a great birthday when it comes. Thank from you. Ruffy, from Tam, from Alison, and from myself, Peter Martin. To you out there, thank you very much. Don't forget to enter the competition if you get a chance. chance to win an iPad, a chance to win the Xbox, and the Diego Maradona canvas. It really is a fantastic prize. Uh, hopefully you can get involved in that. From everyone here, thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit